right, we're good, Vic? Yes, sir. All right, man. So, a Toast Life podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here. So, let's give it up. Another episode, and we have literally a man of many talents, a legend right now, hosting, podcasting, social media, music, fit check on point, where we got Mr. <laughs> Rosecrans Vic in the house, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you. How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm fighting the cold a little bit, but aside from that, you know, everything's good. You're one of those that get sick off the weather change? Yeah, it's, it was like, yeah, I feel weak for doing that. I'm like, damn, I haven't been like, you know, utilizing, like uh, strengthening my immune system lately. But it was like, I was in Vegas last weekend. And then like the, we were at an Airbnb, like it was so hot outside. Inside was like so cold. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like me and my son both got sick. We caught a little cold and it's like been having to deal with that the whole week. But that's, I'm good though. that's right. You're a dad. Yeah, facts. How old is your son, man? He's eight. Going on nine. It's going to be nine in, like, two months. You mind us asking how old you are? Yeah, I'm 30. I just turned 30. Happy late birthday, bro. Thank Happy you. belated birthday. Well, not just, but, like, two months ago. Uh, but you can yeah, celebrate yeah. yourself all year, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. If girls are able to celebrate themselves all month, why can't we do it yeah, all year? No, I'm almost that. I celebrate my birthday, like, a few times, so. Are you, do you celebrate, like, every time your birthday comes around, do you throw, like, a big thing? Do you like to celebrate it? <clears throat> yeah, I definitely like to celebrate it. Um especially the past few years, it's been, like, different because you have to include, like, so many different things, right? Like, so, like, for my 29th birthday, like, I threw, like, a an event in, like, like, all my people were good, but you had to, like, buy tickets if you didn't, you know, if you didn't know me. And it's, like, we made money. Like, I looked at it as a way to, like, I want the bag for my birthday. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you're chasing the bag. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, that was, like, that was cool. And then um, this past year, I just did a private birthday at the Novo, and I just had, like, my my people, like, not really too much family besides, like, my sister and, like, my tia and shit, like, the younger crowd and shit and, like, industry people. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun, you know? And then I had, like, hung out with my family, you know, day before, you know, just kind of celebrated, hung out with my son, like, you know? It, it was like, it took a few days to celebrate <laughs> my birthday, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you research a little bit about our show... You know, we love to take take this back. Yeah. So where did Rosecrans Vic originate? Where did you grow up in? Uh, so originally I grew up, I was born in Inglewood, and then I grew up in Lenox until I was like nine, which is like the city right next to it. And then from there, we moved to Bellflower, my whole family, and then I went to school in Downey till you know, till, till I graduated. Yeah. And then after that, moved around a lot. In between, I moved around because like my parents split up, and then... My mom moved, like, to 30 different places. <laughs> and then my dad stayed in the same house. Um, so, like, my mom moved to, like, Orange County, Palm Springs, all over. Oh, you know shit. What I'm saying? Yeah, so, like, I was, like, you know, I would just leave shit in the box. Yeah. Because I was just, like, we're going to move in six months anyway. It's, like, I get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what's, like, what's the point? Like, I'm, like, I'm going to do extra work. Like, no, I'm not even going to take it out. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, I know. We're, we're, go- where are we? we're next to, Mom, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so, I, I did a lot of moving, but. Then, um, I guess after 18, I just stayed in Bellflower. Um, then I moved to Whittier once my son was born. And then Hawthorne for like two, three years. And then now I'm in Hollywood. So kind of yeah. all over. <laughs> so if someone asks you originally, hey, where are you from? You say Inglewood? I'll say Rosecrans. Why you? That, well, all right. Yeah. So let, 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 yeah. let's, let's get this clear for everybody listening in and, and wondering where Rosecrans came from. So it's a huge long street 27 miles long running through LA and uh, the parts of LA it runs through are like the most familiar to me right so like Excellent. my grandma lives in Hawthorne right off of Rosecrans my great grandpa lived in Compton right off of Rosecrans and then when we moved to Bellflower we were right off of Rosecrans right so like even though I moved around a lot that street always felt like home to me damn so when it was time to like start a brand and stuff I was like you know what that's what I feel like makes me me, you know? So with Rose, like growing up, what what do you think was like one of those, like did moving around affect you in any sort of way? Because I've always lived in Baldwin Park for my whole life. Same. Dylan's still there, mm-hmm. but now I'm, I live in, in Fontana. So mm-hmm. even like just slightly moves, I mean, it is a kind of a game changer, but you mm-hmm. said 
you're moving from city to city, area yeah. code to area code. Did that affect you in any sort of way, like building friends, relationships, like establishing you yourself and wherever you were at? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like, fortunately, I didn't move schools too much, right? So, like, I did move schools when I lived in Lenox to Bellflower. Like, that was, like, I was, like, the new kid at school um, in fourth grade. But after that, like, even though my mom moved around a lot, I was always in a Downey School District. So, mm. you know, it wasn't like, I wasn't the new school, like the new kid at school a lot of times, luckily. You know what I'm saying? I just stayed in the same thing. Yeah. Had the same friends, you know what I'm saying? So that was cool. But it did force me to learn how to adjust, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, half the time I'm with my mom and we're like going to different places, new apartment buildings, new houses, new neighbors, and just being like, damn, this is different, this is different. <laughs> Getting adjusted to all this shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it did affect me, you know, um, negatively or positively. I don't know. It just depends how you look at it. Um, but I definitely am glad that I was able to learn how to adjust on the fly. Mm. You adjust on the fly? Are you, you're more of a introvert until they start talking to you, huh? And so I start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because I even, like, I think during, I mean, during just growing up, right, like, some... I was never a confident person growing up. I always just try to fit in. Like, mm. I want to be with the cool kids because mm. then I would be quoted a cool yeah. kid, but I was a fucking nerd. <laughs> I was, I was that kind of like loner, popular kid because I was, I was chill with the nerds, but I was chill with the, with the cool people. You school. had to be chill with the nerds though because then who are you going to compare answers with? <laughs> hey, that's how I passed my hey, classes, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> I know, shout out to all those people in high school, but. We compared a lot of answers a lot of times. <laughs> I'm pretty weird, so I got I got along with the weird people too. I seen the your your dad drive from what like do shout out Duno and Letty, but from what like when they talk about you, like your dad, he has like old school cars, right? Yeah. Low riders? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's in a car club. How did that affect you in your life? How did that inspire you in your life? Um, I mean it was cool to see like that like how passionate, you know, he was about something and how much hard work and everything it, it took to to build, you know, the cars. Like he bought the car, the 64 Impala, when I was like two years old maybe. Dang. And he picked it up. It was a piece of shit. Like it was just, you know, it yeah. barely ran and all that stuff. But like um, he started to fix it up himself, you know, after work and stuff, like put that hard work in, into it, spent money on it. And then... You know, then I remember seeing it like in the backyard, like just like, dude, this car is dope. You know, it was like it was in my <laughs> life, my whole life. You know what I'm saying? I'm did, just like, did yes. you take it to prom or anything? No, um, <laughs> I didn't. Nah, my dad's stingy with this car. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he said like, he's like, Mijo, when you turn 18, this car is yours. I'm fucking 30, dog. Like, <laughs> still still not that shit, that shit is not in my driveway. It's in his. Um, but no, like it was cool. You know, like just having that that culture around. You know, um, like I said, he was so passionate about it. Yeah. And um and being around like the car club culture, the oldies, the you know what I'm saying, just everybody getting along. It's it's very family oriented, you know, if I don't know if people have like been to any type of car shows or anything like that. It's really chill. I know it's like hella cholos and shit like <laughs> like Belones and shit, but like it's all about family. At least the the car club my dad's and there's no bullshit. Like everybody's cool, chill, they bring their fam along, food. Everybody's nice and respectful and shit. So when you hear, like, that word family, like, for you, is it just blood-related or does it expand from not even being blood-related? Um, definitely, I think, first, blood-related because I'm very close with, like, my sisters. They're, like, everything to me. Obviously, my son, um, my family, you know, we're all pretty close. Um, but there is, like, you know, people I've met along the way that I do consider family that, like, if you, I consider you family, like, I'm inviting you to my family parties. Or if... In that, honestly, like, I don't even have to invite you to my family parties. Like, you know you're welcome. Yeah. Shit, you know, like, like you know, if you there. walk in, te saludo instead of, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? What and, are you doing here? Yeah, and there's very few people like that, but, like, at the same time, like, I've met them through music, and it's, like, just, I consider them family now, you know? So, talking about music, well, because this was, uh, his family, it's not that big, huh? No. no, no but like, they party like they're, like, fucking 30 it's deep. like five of us, bro. <laughs> but they party like they're 30 deep for sure. My dad's my dad's young as fuck. Like he's a walking meme, bro. His dad is a walking meme. <laughs> bro, if you, my dad's like a teenager, bro. Bullshit aside. No so th thankfully for like the this whole podcasting has been like going good. Mm -hmm. Our relationships are growing, mm -hmm. and we're like, oh well, we're planning to go to either Texas, Miami, Fire. um, 
couple people that tapped in and were like, well, let's try this. And he was like, hey, I'll be your driver. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, dude. But he's one of those, like, you invite a friend to be sober so he can drive you back. He's going to be one of those dudes that's going to get probably drunker than us. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get fucked up. <laughs> dude, I'm... Um, <laughs> you're going to need an alternate driver just in case that doesn't I've, work. What, what was that TikTok yesterday? The When you bring a, a driver, uh, your D&D, and then he gets more drunk, so now you're trying to figure out who's less drunk enough <laughs> to do drive home? <laughs> you're having a little Uber. meeting right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, so... <laughs> everything you got going on, you just, you just mentioned music. How long have you been in this music industry for the people that don't know... You know, to be like, I think right now, shout out Brownback Podcast. Mm -hmm. You guys are, like I just said earlier, you guys are goats. Thank you, bro. You guys are for the people, everybody, like you sold out. You already have two sold out live shows yeah. under the bag. Yeah. And you guys are now in season three. You guys are now on the top of Spotify. You're getting to the top of Spotify. So, but prior to that, you've been in music. Yeah. So, um. That's where really everything started for me. Um, I've always been passionate about music, like, since I was a kid. I remember my parents were really young, right? So they were listening to The Chronic. They were listening to, you know, Dr. Dre, Snoop, everything while I'm at home in the car. They were still, like, partying, really, you know what I'm saying? They were, like, they had me when my dad was 19, my mom was 18. So I'm, like three, four years old, like, they're 22, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, the prime of the party age. at 22, like, what are you doing, you know what I'm saying? 20, so, 23. Tw yeah, exactly, yeah, so, like, in there. Wild in, 22, wild in. You know what I'm saying? And they're, they're living in the hood, and, like, they're living in, like, don't be a menace, like, where you see everybody outside partying in the backyard, like, that was my parents' life, you feel me? Like, <laughs> you're, you're that little kid that's in the barbecue with... <laughs> <laughs> Trying to steal the Corona and shit. <laughs> Dude <laughs> yesterday, yesterday we went out to uh, kind of, Sorry oh, to cut it off no, no. We went out to uh, Dave and Buster's uh -huh. I Took my son, my little sister Me and him were, are chilling And then, well, we racked up a couple points You know, they're going to get some toys So we walk into the little toy the, To redeem the toys And there's two little kids, bro, I swear to God They're probably seven-ish Mm-hmm and they're, like, acting funny. Like, they're looking around, it's laughing. Like those, uh, yeah. And then I walked, like, I was just walking by, and I seen one of the little kids was trying to open a toy. And I looked at Dylan, and I was like, these fools are really going to do this. And they're looking around. They opened the toy, put that shit in his pants. Wow. They walked out, and I was like, like Nino, ponlo pa atrás. <laughs> <laughs> they bucked it after that, bro. Bro, wild and Little kids are wild then. But I was like, dude, I can't burn them out. I used to do this when I was small. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to. Don't do this, kids. If you're yeah, watching this, don't do no, this. No stealing. That's terrible. So you were, in, you were in the parties. Your parents were young when they had you. Yeah, exactly. So for you, what, what age did you, did you have a son? You're 22? I had my son when I was 21. 21. Yeah. I had just turned 21. Did that change you? Oh, it changed everything. Mm. It changed. I wasn't like, to be honest, I wasn't like ever like a crazy kid. I wasn't like a bad kid. Um, I would get into trouble here and there, you know, like towards the end of high school, I was just like, man, I want to like experience life. You know, yeah. I want to do shit. Like I want to drink four locals with my friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so <laughs> <laughs> I want to get drunk in the riverbed and pass out. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so like I said, I wasn't, it wasn't too crazy. I would hang out with my friends, kickbacks, all that. But, um, I wasn't taking life like too seriously. I was going to school, had a job. It was all right. But I wasn't, like, going in any direction fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, once, you know, I found out that uh, my son's mom was pregnant and I had to, like, get my shit together. I was like, oh, shit, I got to figure this shit out. I need a full-time job. I need to, like, take school seriously. Um, and then also, like, that just motivated me to do everything I'm doing now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, my son and my brand are the same age. Because when he was born, I'm like, I was, a, I was a working full-time at the bank and every single day I was like, dude, this is miserable. And I was looking up to, like, the people that were, like, in higher positions than me. Yeah. And they were, like, way older than me, making, like, four bucks an hour more. And I'm like, it's going to take me 
10 years to make four more dollars uh, like, like uh, an hour that's just impossible yeah you know what i'm saying i'm like are you serious and and like well what's that conversation if you work hard you can be where i'm at right now i don't want to be there dog. <laughs> yes, exactly, but i want to be above you. i want to be so far away from where you're at right now <laughs> exactly. like fuck if i work harder this is where i'm gonna yeah, be dog like shit. yeah like shit if what like? We'll you, give you, you the. If I work hard, I can be bald with ten kids too. Like, <laughs> I'll, like a fucking miserable. I'll life. get the key to the door. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> I have to deal with the customer complaints. Like, oh my Just god. Want to talk to the manager, Vic? Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I didn't want to do that. So you know, it really just pushed me to like, I'm like, I have to do something. I have to do something different, right? And um, so I actually went back to school because I had dropped out, and then I went back to school and I just focused on. Um, you know, just more like just actually went and focus. And I'm like, okay, the, the classes I'm going to take now, I'm actually going to give a fuck about, I'm yeah. going to really take everything I can from there. Um, I didn't even give a fuck about getting a degree. I was just trying to get tools. I'm like, I need tools. I, I'm going to take a marketing class. I'm going to take a radio class. I'm going to give it my all. And then um, I want to start a brand. And I just got inspired by different things. There was a lot of blogs at the time that, I was reading while I was at work that kept me entertained. And I was like, man, like I would love to do something like this, but my version of it. So I started Rosecrans, um, Ave in Rosecransav.com in 2014 in like, I launched it in October. Um, and then just started writing, teaching myself how to write, covering music that nobody was talking about. Um, one of the first artists was Draco. Um, another artist was Greedo. And I just started really to, embrace like the new artists from LA that nobody was talking about. Yeah. And you know, from there people just started to give a fuck about my opinion. You, you know, you became that, that voice for the people that people weren't talking about basically. Exactly. And I was like, man, like there's so many media companies based in LA or, or even just have offices in LA that didn't give a fuck about anything going on in LA. And that had a problem with that. I'm like, you guys are all here. You guys are going to get coffee. You guys are just raising your families here. But Anybody from LA, like you're just like ah, nah, I'm not. I don't like that. Yeah, like you're like, like you're not shit. Like I don't fuck with that. And I was just like, well, that's bullshit. Yeah, like, like you're not shedding the light on the actual LA natives. Exactly. And yeah, because I was I was looking at that yesterday, your your page, and I was like, damn, like this was really, like it never misses a beat. So, you you started this when in the middle of working. Yeah. So you took a leap of faith. Um, or what, yes what was no. that, what was that process then? Because to, for those people that are going to start something there, we're always in that in between, like, should I, but what if this doesn't work? What if it doesn't go the way it's planned? Or what if I start it and it doesn't go good within a month or two? And then now it, it is what it is. Put it to the side. Yeah. So like, um, I didn't take a leap of faith until years later. I was always like focused on, you know, working still, you know, I needed that. Uh, paycheck to you know provide for me and my son and Correct. my family um so i was doing that i was working at the bank i worked at a different bank when you know just trying to get more money and shit and then um i was working at wells fargo full time as a personal banker making okay money did you get the key no i didn't get the key oh, good, guys. <laughs> they would not trust me with the key. <laughs> if they gave me the key the bank would open way <laughs> too late <bro. laughs> They got the whole the whole 10 people outside the yeah, bank right, ready to cash their checks and shit. Yeah, that'd be hot at me. So uh, it wasn't until 2019, um, the very beginning of 2019, I got fired from Wells Fargo. Um, Damn. Yeah, I was, I was late, bro. I was late every day. Like, <laughs> I, swear. I was so fucking late, bro. It's because, like, I was doing so much, bro. Like, um, I was working, obviously, full time, and then I was still doing, like, all the shit with Rose Pants had picked up. Like, I was get, doing a lot of events. How much were you posting at that time? Uh, what do you mean? Like, for Rose Pants, like, what were like what were you doing? Posting, going to events, like, what yeah, was that was looking like? everything. I was just, I was going to events, networking, or throwing my own events. Um, usually, I would do them, like, Thursday nights. You know, it would be, like, a sold-out show, and then i have to, like, go to work three hours of sleep the next morning. I, I fucking wake up late, bro. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so, um, you know, that kept happening and they'd be like, Oh, Victor, you're late again. You're late again. But everybody there loved me. So they kept me on for like way longer than I should have. Cause they were like, you were supposed to not be more late more than six times. And it was like, 
<laughs> shows 11. <or> like, <laughs> 11 is like generous because they didn't count the other like four, <laughs> 20 five, and shit. six. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like we didn't see shit. The manager day. fucked with me heavy. And um, like, see him late? I don't see nothing. Yeah, exactly. Like, she fucked with me. So after that, uh, I was just like, damn, like I was fired. And then um, at that point, I, I had a decision to make. I'm like, okay, do I go look for another job at a bank or do I just try to figure this out? You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just figure this out. Like, this is what I wanted. I wanted to work for myself. I wanted to be on my own. I didn't want to work at the bank. God gave me this blessing. It's not how I thought it would be. You know, I thought I would be able to, like, walk out and be like, all right, guys, I got a new job. I work at a record label or I work this and that. But it was different. You know, it wasn't exactly how I envisioned it. But either way, I was free. And I was like, okay, I have a little bit of money saved. You know what I'm saying? Like, and let me just take this leap of faith now or never, really, because I think I was like 27 when that happened, and I was like, okay, well, I want to do this, you know, and I think that was right after I had just went to Rolling Loud, LA, I was like, I had interviewed like Blueface, I had, I had like just done so much dope shit, so I was like still excited, you know what I'm saying, yeah. I'm like, bro, I just came up, you know, I'm just like, yeah, I just did all you're, this You're on the high shit. horse right there. Yeah, so I'm like, you know what, let's just keep it going, so from there, I just, you know, started to figure out how to monetize my brand, I started um, doing publicity for different artists, and working with artists and, you know, just finding ways to, to make money off this shit. And I haven't looked back. So it's Wait, been like three years. Can, can we give it up? Because he said earlier that he was selling out shows and still showing up to work. Yeah. So oh, we got to, yeah. we got to, yeah. come on, bro. Yeah. You were putting in work while working. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was, that was the thing. It was like, the more I do on the side. It motivated you the more. more. Yeah. And like the less time I'll have to be here. Like the faster this shit moves on the side that, Eventually, I'll be able to just quit this shit one day, right? Yeah. What do but you think I, that? Do you think that was a blessing that they fired you at that moment? Oh, it's the, that was like the biggest blessing in my life. If you, have you thought about that? Like, if they didn't fire you at that moment, how long more you you would have been there? Yeah, I mean, who knows, right? You know, it's, I feel like subconsciously I was trying to get fired the whole time. I was showing up late, maybe. <laughs> You're like, should I show, should I show up late one more I'm time? I'm like, how many times do I have to be late for you <laughs> fuckers to fire me? <laughs> For real, huh? <laughs> enough like, is yeah, enough. I, that on you, like, I know. Sure. I'm like 30 times. <laughs> this That's fucking, it. That's me, bro. This, <laughs> this <laughs> fool goes late, and calls off, and I'm just <laughs> gets a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you bullshit is Hey, bro. Boss. Now you're the lead. Now you're the lead driver. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's the boss you know what? Me. I like how you're on your own schedule. You're now the fucking timekeeper. <laughs> like. <laughs> this guy's wild, then. But so you you took that leap. You like when did you know you were actually doing something great like who was was it someone you interviewed was it someone that you got like followed by reposted like who reached out to you or who did you reach out to that you interviewed or associate yourself with that was like oh fuck I'm, this is this is serious kind of like that made a moment like that made yeah moment. like that made i think for us what should aside was when we sat down with duno no way yeah Fire. like it was i mean we were we we're already doing that for like a while out here mm -hmm. in la and then one video, one, one video went viral, and it was a, do I cry as a man? Yeah, I do. And then I seen him when he, I, when he messaged me on IG first, I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, this a fake account for sure. <laughs> but tapped in on, on TikTok, and he commented on there. And then we started, we talked really quick, transpired. An hour later, I'm calling him like, yo, like, this is going to be crazy. But because for us is like yes we were we are small podcasters, but with the big purpose. Yeah. And everybody needs that break, right? Like yeah. you're gonna you're gonna sit down or or podcast interview with a blue check, and everybody's like, oh fuck, you made it, bro. And it, for us, it was like he came. We had a great podcast, and everybody's like, yo, like you fucking did it, you made it, blah blah blah. But for us, it was like. All right, bro, like, this is it. Like, we know we're doing something. Let's run. Yeah, that's fire. Yeah, so, like, for you, what oh, man, what was I'm that? Trying, I'm trying to think. I, I mean, there's, like, so many different moments, right? Because it's, like, you always feel like, oh, this is the biggest moment of my career until the Just next, the next big moment of your career happens. Yeah, right? like, this is big for us, dog. Like, yeah. this, this sitting down with you, one-third of the Brownback podcast, one of the L.A. natives that is really fucking doing it for his people here in L.A., like, this for us is uh, much is amazing. Game. I appreciate that for real. Um, but if I had to think of one, I mean, the most recent thing that I could think of is like selling out the El Rey. Like that was just 
That's so crazy. crazy to me. Like, on some, this is like legendary LA venue. This is, we sold it out. And the thing is, too, is like, I've been fortunate in my career, like, to do a lot of shows, right? But like, a lot of those are like showcases I put on with like different rappers, different artists. And, you know, a lot of those have, have sold out. And I've always been fortunate, always been excited. Like, man, this is great. This is a great feeling. This was like the first time where it was like, nah, this, they came to see me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was weird. Because <laughs> I'm usually the one in the background. I, I was watching putting that. Putting all this shit on and making sure, like, these people are here inside or these people get to the stage on time. The DJ has the songs. Like, I'm doing all the dirty work. And this time it was like, nah, they came to see you, bro. You just, just, just sit there just and talk. Just be you. And, <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. But it, I was watching the El Rey one that when you guys dropped the video. Yeah. And... <laughs> What was Duna saying that all the girls came down to see you and shit? Like, yeah, it was wild. That's my guy right here. <laughs> I'm like, he was, he was like, oh, it's only you two. I was like, nah, if we'll sit in because all these girls are like tapping in with you and looking at you. So we got to get the pretty face <laughs> on the podcast. That. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Shout out my boy. Hit him up. So what was your, when you walked out of El Rey, like there's two feelings, right? Yeah. When you, The moment you walk in, mm -hmm. or three. Moment you walk in, the moment you're sitting down now, everybody's in, and then the moment you walk out. So like the moment I walked in, it was it was it was pretty normal. And you know, it's like showing up to work, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Getting there early type shit, something I'm not used to. Um but for once. <laughs> exactly. For once. I'm for like, real. I'm on time to this shit for sure. <laughs> um and then, you know, the moment I, I was on stage was like very surreal, just looking at all the people there. And you know, I'm very, like, realistic, right? So I know that Duno and Letty, like, have huge followings, right? Bigger than mine. Um, and then I know the brown bag has its own following. And I have the smallest. And so seeing all the people there, I'm like, you know, a lot of them are there to see Duno and Letty. In my mind, right? But, like, once I get there and, like, I see all the love that, like, I'm getting as an individual and just, like, the brown bag as a whole, I'm like, wow. Like, no, they're there. They're here to see me, too. And that was, like, a dope feeling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because I'm humble, bro. I don't think, like, everybody fucking knows my name or, you know, I'm the biggest shit in the world. Like, you know, it's, like, everything with its time, you know? And, and I see it. So I'm, like, wow, all these people are actually here to see me? Like, you know, when it's, like, when I say, like, yo, what's up with the ladies, da, 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 And then, like, there's girls there, like, ah! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and even before then, like, at the meet and greet, when, like, there's people there specifically to see me, like, yo, I just came to see you, bro, like, da, da, da. I'm like, wow, that's a crazy feeling to me. Something I'm still getting adjusted to. So let's give it up on that one. <laughs> Not on that <laughs> point, baby. Shake stuff. We'll make you shake. <laughs> I got them burgers. <laughs> I just got burgers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so fast forwarding, you're selling out. You're, you're in this business already. And then you go, you're wearing a chain, a specific chain. What is that? Oh, yeah. Shout out OTR. You're... Um, yeah, so I work for a record label, uh, OTR Records, and, um, yeah, I mean, shit, I mean, shit's been going pretty good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, was like, that was, was that, like, a overall goal for you? you like, you, we were talking earlier about music, growing up, like, around your parents and with the parties and everything, and doing your vlogs for LA and everything, and then now you're landing, landed this this job this is it a passion a dream yeah i mean i've worked for a lot of record labels um to be honest like th and this is funny because it's like i do all that shit like behind the scenes so i don't even let too many people know but like i've worked for def jam alamo records asylum atlantic this is all stuff i do like behind the scenes where i'm like trying because it's not about me it's about pushing the artist right whatever That's artist usually it's an artist from la that the label is like kind of like i don't know what to do with this artist how can we market them in Los Angeles? Vic, we need your help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, all right, well, here's the amount, and then we can do some stuff. What did, what did Duno say? The bag got to be right. The bag, bag got to be, right, be right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so, you know, we worked. I work with a lot of those companies, but, like, the company that I have, like, a steady job with that, like, I'm able to, you know, give my input on everything. It's a small company, and, and we're also able to, like, I signed my first artist, over there, you know what I'm saying? So that was dope. Um, come on, come yeah, on, you got to. Out, yeah, shout out my boy 22 G Faye. He's a really dope artist from San Diego. And um, so that's so this that's this company, that's OTR. You know, shout out my boy Soul, uh, the owner. 
and then my boy Cali, who's Duno's manager, you know, he he works with me at the label as well. Like he handles like all the like the A and R music aspect. I handle all the publicity aspect of it, marketing and stuff like that. And we work together on a lot of things. And um, so yeah, so this is like home team basically. You know what I'm saying? So to get a little bit more into depth and with everything you're doing, like how do you build or how does your confidence come? How does your your confidence and your ability and your talent come? Like, were you always like this? Are you a more reserved and you never give yourself the flowers? Like, who is Vic when nobody else sees? So I'm pretty introverted and I'm pretty quiet for the most part, right? Like, um, I'm comfortable being the most quiet person in the room and the loudest. Either one is just, and there's also like no in between. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> I'm either just like, I'm gonna just be in the cut observing shit yeah. one time just to like see like who's in the room and, and how people act. And then there's, there'll be another time where I just feel like, you know, entertaining everybody and start, you know, joking around and saying shit and seeing people's reaction when I say shit. Yeah. So either one I'm comfortable with, and growing up, I was like, I would say I was a lot more shy. And just over time, I guess, you know, confidence has, has grown. I wasn't like the most popular kid in school, but like, I definitely wasn't a dweeb. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it was like those, it was like, I remember like the cool kids being like over there. And my dad always like stressed to me to never be a follower. So like, I'm like, yeah, those are the cool kids, but everybody thinks they're cool. Like, to me, they're not that cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, it's because, because like, the reason they were cool was because, at least in my high school, every every high school is different. It's like, because they were doing the most drugs, because they were, like, disrespecting their mom the most. Like, yeah. because, like, I'm That's like, that shit ain't cool to me, dog. Like, yeah. it's not. I have a different definition of cool. And yeah. then the thing was, too, that, like, like, you know, shout out to Downey. Like, I fuck with it. But, like, I always had a different perspective because where, like, where I came from prior to Downey, like, was bad, bro. Like, it was the hood. Like, it was, like, fifth, uh, like, I was, like, five years old, kindergarten, like, our school's getting shot at. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> motherfuckers that drive by on bikes. <laughs> Brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck the kids, dog. Fuck the kids. Like, that shit don't get reported, dog. That shit was, like, every day. And my dad's like, who was it? Who was it? Like, my dad's all trying to see, like, who the fuck was it? Like, shooting at my kid's school. Like, yeah. and so I had a different perspective, bro. Like, I'm just like, yo, you guys are, like, privileged. In, as, as well am I, you know, now. But, like, I would the way I would see people trying to be, like, more hood than they were when I'm like, bro, like, I was raising some shit, and you don't want to be over there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, the reason we had to move is because my dad's getting shot at every other day. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's nothing cool about that, bro. Like, that's real life danger. So with, like, with everything happening right now, and, I mean, the society, social media is just crazy, right? Like, everybody's trying to fit in this persona because, how you said, in high school, like, the coolest people were the ones acting out not doing good in school, mm -hmm. um, the ones disrespecting their parents or whatever, like, yo, I could define myself as a cool kid in high school, but to ever disrespect my mom or dad, I'm gonna be like, you're fucking crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah bro, that school? shit ain't cool. You yeah, know what I'm saying? My mom will come with the fucking... No, 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 but you were, you were a popular kid at school. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I was Why? an athlete, fool. I was Why? an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. I was an athlete. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There we go. I mean, I was starting. <laughs> I was giving the coach the water, fool. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> He's hey, a different you got position, to ride the though. bus to the other side. Yeah, school. I, I got staff only on my share, fool. <laughs> <laughs> coach, you need water? I got you. Hold on. <laughs> Look a little parched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Like Bobby Flay fucking building that water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby Bouger. <laughs> oh, I said Bobby Flay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that was the most inspirational speech in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, "What the fuck is this?" Just it's like classic a, movie for boy, boy. TikTok is uh, a video one hundred and one most inspirational words ever. <laughs> but it's because you actually pay attention. You're like, oh shit! Like I want to hear this. You know? but, but his mom was speaking real facts. Oh, his mom was. Uh, women are the facts. devil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not all of them, just some of them. She is the devil. Sports are the devil. <laughs> yeah. like, hey, yo. Fool's ball. <laughs> <laughs> nah, low key, some of those old movies have like probably the most like relatable quotes oh, gosh. ever. I, ever. She was I love watching those movies 
thinking about how they can never make those movies in 2022. Oh, they can. Nah. You know? So Canceled. Many of them. Yeah. Canceled. Can't even make those type of jokes no more. Nah, it, everything's just too sensitive. Like, social yeah. media just brought this whole this whole thing. Like, even, like, some reporters or communities, you know, no fans. Please, no fans. But they go back, like, 20 years back. This person said this during that time. But it's like. That was different. Bro, times. like, un- Andrew Schultz? Oh, yeah. my God. That special that he came out with? That's so fire. That shit was fire. <laughs> Latinas? Oh, yeah. They'll fuck your world up. <laughs> they'll fuck your world up. I swear to God. Oh, God. He's like, if you nut on their stomach, that <laughs> shit's going to open up and suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. What the fuck? Come your ears. Come your ears, Genesis. Come your ears. Nah, but, I mean, it just, it happens. But, so what would be, like, your message to, like, the youth? Because I think that's the next ones up there are the most, they have the most opportunity and they have one of the most, like, what? how do you say it? The most vision to, like, what's happening. And they're the next ones up. So what would, it, like, talking to, say, even your son coming up in this world, like, what when you have that conversation, what, what can you tell them? What can you tell him? Really, like, the best advice my dad always gave me was, like, be a leader. You know, and he was always, I could tell he was always the leader of his friends, right? So, like, I was able to see, and he did it in a different way. Like, my dad's the most intimidating person probably <laughs> in the world. Like, so I've never been intimidated by anybody because of that. Because it's like, just to get out the house, I had to be intimidated a hundred times. Like, do you know who my dad is? Yeah, I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I would never give a fuck. Like, I'm like, bro, like, I have a fucking you're monster scary, at home, I live dog. With this yeah, yeah, like, woke up, this motherfucker made me breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you're not done, are you? <laughs> I'm just like, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> um, and so... I would just I'm I guess my my message would be like don't be a follower be a leader you know and that that just goes for any in any way you know what I'm saying and and I was also like never really raised to like idolize people because everybody has their flaws you know including ourselves so you know don't look up to these people that are going to let you down you know what I'm saying like yeah like you can admire things about people but keep in mind that none of these people are the perfect person you think they might be. And if you have this idea of a, of a person, like that's going to eventually let you down. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just say like, just idolize yourself, man, give yourself credit, look to yourself and be the best version of you. You can be. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Damn. Vic, you're going to add another under like, in your bio, motivational speaker right there. On God, yeah, that's 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 my next check for sure. <laughs> <laughs> if the bag is right, he's ready to speak. Right, you heard? Now, <laughs> seminars and shit. Dude, but in high school, tell me I'm wrong, and and I want to be a little bit more relatable to like everybody listening in. When you're growing up and you see those bad kids that are super cool, you imagine I know I imagine, damn, those are gonna have they have the best life, bro. Oh yeah, I thought they're, they were the best. Bro. Yeah, they're gonna have everything. I'm like, you get to pop. Four ecstasy pills <laughs> during lunch, dude. Like, I can't do that You're shit. having like, four locals right yeah, now? For breakfast? For like, hey, what? You're going to be mad. There, I had a four locals in high school. Like, in, I think it was senior year at a party. I went outside and threw up. For, I swear to God. I only got drunk once during school hours. And it was an accident. I popped an ecstasy during school hours. Shit, what, yo. How, how old are you? the same age? I'm 26. Oh, okay, so so they were damn so I was like a f- in two, in that oh yeah the what was it? the Spider Man's the fours the threes yeah I guess I tapped out at the I time but, <laughs> but like yeah, no like my like my year was like they were all that shit had just kind of started you know what I'm saying it was like I remember like I think my junior year people just started doing mad ecstasy I was just like what but like it was so stupid people were taking it in like fifth period like just like sweating during six like. Drinking water and orange juice. I'm just like, yo, what the fuck? Why, like, why do you want to like, do this in English class? You know I did. It, I did like, it going into my Spanish class. We're reading. We're, we're reading about Beowulf, and you're nah, just over I, here like Papa Molly. I'm sweating. <laughs> 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 they, they, they start reading quick as fuck. I'm like, what's exciting about this? Hey, pues te quiero hablar de. <laughs> nah, I think the worst was Friday night at the movie theaters. All the high school kids were there, and I swear to God, there was one time I seen a dude, and his eyes were like. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, fool? He's like, what's up, fool? <laughs> I'm like, what are you looking at? <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> nah, we're the, we're like, the same height, fool. Bro. <laughs> he was like, what's up, fool? I'm good. I feel good right now. I'm just like, I'm, right here, I'm like, dick, I'm right here. Well, <laughs> look straight, fool. But everybody idolized those people. 
And I think some of those some are the ones that struggle the most to set themselves up for now. You know, we, I think nah, that... let's keep it G, all of them. Come on, dog. They're all disappointed. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, come on, but, like, those motherfuckers <laughs> peaked in high school, dog. And I could never relate. Like, yeah, they some really... Some of them peaked. are, like, 32, and they still think they're in that peak. Bro, I remember, bro. like, I knew these fuckers, right? Like, getting closer, like, to the end of high school, like, you just start to know everybody. And I was cool with them, but I never wanted to, like, be a part of them. But, like, come on, bro. Like, you know... Their life sucks right now. Sorry, I'm sorry. They're, they're, they just do like. But what's that? What's the famous? <laughs> what's what, 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 what's shit. the quote that they say? Oh yeah, bro. You know, soon, dog. I'm working on something. Yeah. Well, you've been working on something for the last ten years. <laughs> yeah. Stop already. It's just you know. You're supposed it's... to be working on your homework, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't have disrespected your mom. Puto. You know? exactly. like, now your mom doesn't fucking want you around, exactly. eh? Exactly. I know. I, my mom for sure is not gonna want me around next week after I get tatted again. <laughs> Our mom. Dude. <laughs> Bro, my I can I already live out like I don't even live with my parents. I got my own spot. Everything. I'm a I'm a dad, and I get I got tatted, and my mom looked at me like, "Hmm, está bonito. ¿Qué piensas o qué?" I'm just like, "Fool." She was like, "Ya no vengas." Wow. I thought I was gonna get kicked out of my fucking house the first time I got. But that's not bad, fool. Come on, look. He has a small tattoo, dude. Like look, small look, at look, it's a look at this. Look at this. Look at that. You can't even see oh, it. Yeah, yeah. You can't I'm the Vic. first one, literally, in like in the whole family, like whole generation. Everybody. How could you, bro? How Vic, you? Vic can't like. Look, can't even look at you. Why would, why would you do that to your family? Yeah. Why would you disrespect your family? <laughs> your mom. <laughs> let me, let me call my mom real quick. <laughs> you're I'm on your mom's side, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we, if I call his dad and be like, "Hey, yo, y de lo vamos a agarrar otro tatuaje." No le digo nada. No le digo nada. My dad is really telling me shit. It's cause the, he, the funny thing is that my dad, my parents think he's a bad influence, but it's the opposite. <laughs> it's the opposite. I'm living, I'm living my life through Dylan right now. Ah, yeah, it's probably okay, the craziest okay. motherfucker. He just, he just goes along with whatever I say. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm trying to show him a good time. Yeah. It, it, it's like when you go out with with Duno. I know yeah. you guys been going to your brunches and all that. Yeah. Duno, like his and his friend group, poet Jakarta, like. Yeah. Bro, like, they're a vibe. Like, you want to, when you go out, you just want to have an experience. Nah, I'd be laughing. Yeah, it, it's it's funny, like, seeing them um, when we're out and shit. Like, I, don't don't get me wrong, I turn up and shit. But, like, it's it's a lot more fun to, like, just see them go through all the steps that, like, I've already been through. You know what I'm saying? So, like, like Deep Poet, for example, like, I always see him and, like, He's such a lover boy and be like making out with girls at the club. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, fucking like bitch. I'm like, I remember those days. No, 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 I'm, I'm like, not making out with anyone at the club. Bro, that, that. Not, why not? It's a vibe. No, I'm kind of picky with that shit. <laughs> no, nah, that video of the boy when I think well, Duna. Monkey pox. Yeah. Girls have cooties, who girls have cooties. <laughs> hey, cooties growing up and then like that should become a real thing. Like, this shit's just called monkey pox and COVID. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like you asked for, ask for the registration card before <laughs> you, know? you kiss them. Hey. One day we're gonna find out we're gonna be like fifty years old and El Cucuy is gonna like really be a thing, <laughs> oh, and it's just gonna shit. like do an interview like with like I think La Flaca. La, La Llorona came out on TikTok already. The real one, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Like Wait, all like these real? childhood dude, myths are just gonna. Pop yeah, out. dude. Like people in Mexico when they do TikToks, like they go to the Pantheon. That's the oh my god. They go like there. I've I've known people that are like. Oh yeah, if we get drunk and we just go to the Pantheon and hang out, I'm like, <laughs> I've done that shit in okay. Oregon. That shit was not fun. I fell asleep there, and, and yeah, I fell asleep. <laughs> I got too drunk. I fell asleep at a fucking a, a graveyard. Nah, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It was not laughs> no wonder you're possessed. <laughs> 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 no wonder. No wonder you're fighting demons. <laughs> bro, dead ass, dead fucking ass. I, I'll show you a text. Yesterday, yesterday in the morning, he was like, "Yo, like I'm gonna I'm gonna fight my demons." I was, yeah, I was like, he's like, no, it was like 10 at night, no? 10 in the morning. 10 in the morning? Hey, have, yeah. you, have y'all ever had sleep paralysis? Oh, fuck yeah. No. No? Never. Dude, you I had it like two days ago. Bullshit aside. Tell me what happened. Okay, so my bed is this way. My he landed in the bed. girl's bed. My closet. My, hey, yo, chill. I don't ever get sleep paralysis when I'm at a girl's house. That's crazy, huh? I know. <laughs> 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 that doesn't that just shows you show her attention for love and affection. Yeah. She's the one that gets sleep paralysis because like she can't get me off of her. You know, like fuck. <laughs> You're the only demon in her bed. <laughs> it's demon time, baby. <laughs> Put the Bible next to. Let's <laughs> just start shaking the fucking bed. Let's go. 
<laughs> no, what did we say yesterday? You know how all Mexican moms, the weather changes drastically? Yeah. Oh, literally, <laughs> no, yeah. literally. Before he came, my mom's like, you ver? I'm like, yeah, it's going to rain. She goes, mijo, va a temblar. Va a temblar, espérate. I'm like, chill. What, what are we fuck? supposed to do? Like, honestly, <laughs> I'd rather be like on the road because you don't even feel that shit. Listen, listen, yeah. What I told her, dude, I was like, dude, okay, this is one thing I hate about you, bro. You stress about things you can't fucking control. Just if it's, see, va a temblar, va a temblar. I can't. think during that time, Dylan was in, in a bed with with the with the individual and tembló y valió verga. When was this? I don't know. When was this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about your sleep paralysis. Oh, yeah, tell me oh. about sleep paralysis. Oh, okay, so my closet door opened up, bro. So I'm here thinking, like, the closet like, door opened up? Yeah, my closet door opened up. Fuck. And I, my, my dog sleeps in my room. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck. And I was like, Bella, like, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to sleep. Bella was on my fucking feet. I was like, holy oh, shit. shit. I was like, God damn. And I sleep with the LED lights on. So I see oh, the door freaky. open up. Boom. Freaky. Hey, you gotta, sleep with, you gotta sleep with the red light, though, because that's it. That's demon time. Fucking guy. You gotta sleep with the red ones on. Freaky okay. guy. You have a water bed? No. <laughs> I would have popped that bitch years ago. <laughs> you have a water bed? No. I've never had a water bed. We're Mexicans. We don't have water beds, bro. <laughs> we drop water. <laughs> we make them into water beds. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> as kids, that's because you wet the bed. You know that fool brought saying? raging waters to his room, fool. <laughs> She may, she, no, I'm not going to say oh, shit anymore. No, 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 shit. no. no. Freaky Yo, I'll get the other hand. I'll get the other hand. <laughs> Freaky deal, fool. Um, so the door opened up, bro, and I'm like, fuck. I'm like, shit. And then um, I heard my parents call me. It was like 3 in the morning. My parents are never up. So I'm like, what the fuck? This is crazy. So I get up. I open the door. And uh, freaking the kitchen light is on. So I go, and there's no one there. And my mom's picky as fuck with the lights. So she n- turns off everything before she goes to sleep. I was like, okay. I was like, maybe she forgot. So I turned it off like nothing. I'm like, I'm chilling. And then I hear a knock. I'm like, what the fuck? The door is right there by the kitchen. So I'm like, I'm going to open this shit up at 3 in the morning. And we have a ring camera. I have access to it. So I opened it up. I was like, dude, there's no one there. What the fuck? So that's when I start getting scared. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to my room. Fuck this. Now I'm one of those that if I hear noises, I just like pretend I don't hear them. Like, (laughs) (laughs) keep my eyes closed. Like, I hear them like, oh, fuck. (laughs) If if I stay asleep, it's not going to happen again. I go back to my room. My dog just staring at the fucking closet. She's just staring at it. I'm like, I would have left. I'm like, all right. I'm like, I can't do shit about it. So I close my door. I go back to my bed. And I'm like, Bella, chill, bro. You're scaring the fuck out of me. And she just keeps growling and looking at the closet. And I'm like, God damn. Eventually, I fall asleep. I wake, I wake up. And dude, that's when it hits. And you couldn't move. Bro, I couldn't move for shit. So oh, I'm like this. Fuck. And I can see my dog at the corner of my fucking eye still staring at the fucking closet. And I'm oh, like, shit. God damn. Going on, yeah. I'm here panicking, bro. Did you feel like I'm you were gonna die or something? Panicking, dude. I was literally about to fucking pee because I was like, ah, oh, shit, goddamn, bro. I was like, so f- I was trying so hard to move, but I, I think it's just mental, you know. You can't move. Yeah, you can only think. You can't it, move. Has it happened to you? Yeah, it happened to me like a week ago. I, feel scary, I think it's but. mentally though, because I think, I think you can. Well, you tried to, but you didn't work. So, so, so you didn't. You, you couldn't get up until you got up, basically. Yeah, until like I got up, yeah. but it was like that feeling where you could like. <gasps> Oh, fuck. Like, something's on your chest, and you're like, oh, god damn. I would have just left. No, like, I went back to sleep. I would have left. <laughs> I would have been like, never coming I'll back. Fight you, I'll fight you tomorrow at 3 p.m. <laughs> I'll never come back. Hold the fuck up. Wait, so what happened to you then? Bro, this shit was scary. It hasn't happened to me in so long. But the way it happened to me was different this time. Um, so I live alone. So I was, like, just laying down on my bed. I had just, like, moved my bed around and shit, too. And I got up. Well, like, I was asleep, and then I tried to get up, and I couldn't. And then I was like, fuck. Sleep paralysis. And I'm already thinking, like, oh, my, oh shit, like, yeah. sleep paralysis, you know? I can't wake up. I'm like, fuck, I'm trying to, like, move my neck. I can't. Terrible feeling. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I see something, and then, like, it's literally, like, like a like a spirit or something, bro. Like, like oh, it was shit. scary, like, near my door. And then I was like, I was like, fuck. But, like, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't really get scared because <clears throat> since I knew it was, like, sleep paralysis, I was like... I was like, I'm good. I'm protected by God. And, like, I kept saying that. And then I was just like, I'm like, bitch-ass demon won't come over here. Like, <laughs> You're like, you're you know like, what I'm saying? Like, dormir, cabrón, yeah. No, I was like, I was like, it won't come over here. So I'm like, it's, it's not going to come over here. It's just going to stay there. I'm like, fuck it. It's just going to stay there. Like, it's not even going to get near me. Yeah. And it didn't get near me. It just stood there. And I was like, whatever. I was like talking shit to it in my dreams. Like, but I'm like, because I'm not like, I'm, I got God on my side. Like, it's, I'm good. I, I do that same shit. It's like when... 
like that the house like if I have everything off, I have my LEDs on, you know. Uh, but they're not red, yeah, yeah. but they're not red, but they're not red. <laughs> hey, I'll be finding demons They're not red. I ha- I got <laughs> I, I, I have the I have the white ones on, so you know, just chilling. Yeah. But I feel like everything else is just black and I feel like if if I leave the door open, I feel like someone's there. So when I'm like I was hearing some shit outside and then like around like in the kitchen like uh my kids toy turned on. It was like the fuck? My kids are not even here for what like, the no fuck? So I'm like you. I'm like fuck this fool. That fool runs up. <laughs> I'm ru- I was like, Red. I'm like, I'm rushing this fool, <laughs> <laughs> dude. There was, I think there was one time like Fontana, like there was like full rain, thunder, like started happening crazy. I swear to God, I took out my fucking nine and I put it on my <laughs> on my thing. I'm like, fuck whatever food comes right now. Because my thing is like, shit. if a demon comes, I'm drop kicking him. <laughs> I was like, I've seen all these movies. I'm fighting this motherfucker. But now nah, some fools, some people do get it pretty bad. And they're just like, I mean, this is normal for a lot of people. Yeah, I, so, I hate it. It hadn't happened to me in so long. But yeah, that was weird. My co- sleepwalk. I heard some people sleepwalk. Never happened to me, but I've seen my cousin. It happened to my cousin. My cousin sleeps also when he drunk. When he's drunk. Nah, that's different. For he's just drunk. Dude, <laughs> he's, he's just drunk. Doesn't want to no, go to no, bed. Like he sleeps in general, but when he when he when he's drunk, it's like he does it more often. So the first thing he always he and he always does this shit. It annoys the fucking me. He walks and wherever he bumps into, starts peeing, bro. And no way. dude, so we have family over every fucking <laughs> every every Christmas, every holiday because oh, they come from Oregon. Shit. And I, I was drinking Buzz Balls, and this was like, dude, let me have Crazy. One. And That's how you know demon. Bro. Yeah. I'm like, fuck it. Okay, you're at home. If you drink here, you're straight, you know? So I give him a Buzz Ball. He gets drunk as fuck off of one Buzz Ball. He starts calling his girl. He's, he's talking to his girl. Everyone's asleep, and this was like loud as fuck talking oh, to his girl. Shit. And I'm like, yo. I was like, Gail, go to fucking sleep already. And he's like, shut the fuck up. He gets up, pulls it down, and starts taking a <gasps> fucking piss there, no bro. No way. And I'm like, dude. It's the buzz ball. Dude, it's I, the we're buzz sleeping ball on the floor because the whole family staying at the house. <sighs> we're sleeping at the, on the floor. I'm like, dude, if you start peeing, the pee's going to get on everyone, dog. <laughs> so I get up. I'm mad as fuck, yo. Mad as fuck. Three in the morning. I slapped the fuck him off. Like, boom. <laughs> I'm like, clean your shit up, bro. And he goes, they have only done it once. Relax. I'm like, bro, what the hell? Like, like the foam that's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna absorb it. Fool, uh, relax. Bro, the funny thing that my dog gets up and starts licking it, dog. I'm like, oh my god, dude. Not for the champ, fool. Like, dog's dude, the champ. I fucking hate this. Damn, dude. that's gross. Oh no, no, no. That's crazy. So, <laughs> damn, we just talked about. <laughs> we got, off topic, we got super <laughs> off topic. We talked about a lot. What is one of the most memorable? Events, moments that you personally have had in in your life. Hmm. In in just my life, I mean, I guess like my son being born. Hmm. That was like probably the most. That that was like the moment my life changed. I felt like you know what I'm saying. What What do you think changed about you personally? Um, just being responsible, just being much more responsible, just being like really dedicated and motivated, I would say. Because, um, like I said, like, my son and my brand are, like, the same age. So it's, it's, like, after that, like, my life, it was hard. It got harder, but it got better. You know what I'm saying? And, and now, like, I'm able to pick up my son from school whenever, um, take him to school whenever. I was with him, like, a majority of the summer. His mom had to work. I was just like, all right, we're just going to kick it here. You know, we're going to yeah. you know, hang out. We're going to go do shit, you know? Yeah. And um, that's, like, so liberating and and so dope um something i didn't have like my parents were working all the time you know what i'm saying so like they weren't able to do that with me and that's kind of all my son knows like he remembers me working at the bank you know a little bit but like in these older more formative years for him he knows that like oh like you know my dad is gonna always be there he can pick me up anytime you know and um and he knows I'm always there for him. So I think that's that's a big flex right now too because I mean I was the same way that my mom was was there for us pretty much the whole time, but like my dad the same way working. Yeah. And shout out Dre South Made Rancho. His thing like he was in the army, did his thing, and one of his things about him he was like now I have that freedom that I can I pick up my son every day. Yeah. I drop him off at sports. I am that dad that I've always wanted. Yeah. And I'm that for him now. So I'm just exactly. like, 
I'm like, damn, well, that's powerful. Yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling, you know what I'm saying? Because before I was like, I'll get off of work at like 6, you know what I'm saying? And spend a few <laughs> hours with them, and then it's like to bed, and then do it all over again. Yeah. And you miss a lot of time. You so know is, is there something you regret? Like, like not just from yourself, but in your whole life, something you regret that you could change? Or do you regret things in life? No, I don't feel like I regret anything. So I feel like everything was just um, led to a, another. Any any negative that happened in my life was eventually turned to a positive, I feel like. You know, even with the moving around, even with my parents breaking up, like all that shit, eventually it led to positivity. You know what I'm saying? Like my sister and I, um, we're doing like really well for ourselves and we always laugh because <clears throat> we're like, yo, how did like, so like my mom is like hella like, supportive and like free spirit and stuff and like my dad is like super strict so we're like how did we have like a free spirit mom and like a super strict dad and like a divorce and it led to like two successful people like i don't i'll never understand it <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's like it wasn't it's not supposed to be that way you know what i'm saying in yeah. a way like we had every excuse to become drug addicts every excuse to become you know low lives and you know not take care of our family and just all these things right and we just chose to just like nah like we just got to hustle harder you know what i'm saying even with my dad like he's always had um a good job you know always provided for us financially but my dad's a type of dad that's like i have money y'all don't <laughs> you know what i'm saying and like he's not one y'all of those, broke as y'all broke y'all gotta go get some money like, yeah. like you like, know what i'm saying what how much are you valued zero mm -hmm. you got mcdonald's yeah. money he's never yeah he's never been like you know the type to just be like oh yeah like what do you need son like I'll, you know i got you like n never like that you know and it's whether it was like a good thing or a bad thing we made it into a good thing all right Tim, if you're staying tuned this long make sure again you subscribe you follow you follow all the fucking social media platforms because this was this is a good one this is a good. good one everything you got going on what is your angle? What is your plan? Is there a plan? Um, I mean, there's definitely, like, it, it's really about the destination, you know? Like, because the end goal at a certain point was to just not have to work a regular job and, you know. You got there. Like, yeah, to get to a point where I can sustain myself on, like, my passions, right? Yeah. So, like, I did that. Um. But then there's, like, so many more things that you want to accomplish, you know? And it's, like, it could be stupid little things, like, it's, like, oh, like, get a chain. Like, that was always something I want to do when <laughs> I'm a kid. Like, I was, oh, shit, I got a chain now. Like, yeah. but then it's, like, then you get it, and then you're, like, okay, this is dope. Like, what's next, you know? It's, like, a new car. Okay, I got a new car. Like, that shit's tight, you know? Yeah. A year or two goes by, like, it's not new anymore, you know? But the end goal, I mean, I guess you could say to, like, um, really provide for my family just more, like, financially um to just build a legacy of generational wealth you know because cool. like my parents both came here to this country like super young but they weren't born here and you know they had to do what they had to do like i don't blame them for working all fucking day you know yeah. what i'm saying like technically they're immigrants same thing with my mm -hmm. grandparents they're still working to this day and, you know, they've done well for themselves and, you know, own properties and stuff and save their money and, and all that. Um, but I wouldn't say that we're a wealthy family, you know what I'm saying? And it's not all about that, obviously, but to, like, be able to provide my son and if I have any more kids, like, with that push that, like, all these white kids have to where it's like, Oh yeah, like you know, my 18th birthday, <laughs> I got 150 thousand dollars, like or a new car. Shit, least, I got a new, I got a new Mercedes. It's some shit that like we don't know about. You know, what I'm saying we can't relate to that. But you know, even now, like my son is accustomed to a different lifestyle than I was when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and yeah. he knows a lot of, about a lot more things, and he's not exposed to like things that I was exposed to when I was in the hood. You know, at his age, so it's like I'm grateful for already doing that. But I want to do so much more. You know, I want him to, if he turns 18 and has an idea for a business, I want to be able to fund it. You know what I'm saying? I want to be like, you know what? I can help you with that. Yeah. Let's do it. Even now, like, he has a YouTube channel. He's, he goes up on it. Bro, he has, like, almost 800 subscribers. Oh, shit. Yeah, so okay, like, okay. Yeah, he works hard at it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I, don't, I never told him, like, start a YouTube channel. 
he's literally been like, hey, dad, I want to start this YouTube channel. And I'm like, okay, I'll support you. I want to support him more, though. I want to get him, like, an editing team and shit. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I want to do all yeah. these things for him and support him in different ways that I was never supported. You know what I'm saying? So I guess you could say that that's my end goal, just build generational wealth and, and you know, push him to those limits. And, like, you know, my sister is, is also doing a great job. She's launching her own brand very soon, Shop Brillionaire. Um, my younger sister, she just turned 18, and she wants to start doing something creatively and, like, create her own brand. And then I have my little brother who's 16 and he loves MMA. Like I want to be able to help support them all and fund their dreams. You know what I'm saying? So that's really the end goal. Got that. Okay. Okay. I like that. Nah, man. And honestly, have you, have you gave yourself those flowers that everything you're doing with Rosecrans, Brown Bag, the record label, everything that you're doing behind the scenes, have you gave yourself the flowers? Like, yeah, I'm pretty badass. I'm that motherfucker. I mean, yeah, like, I talk my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like to, you know, because that motivates me more to, like, yeah, yeah. accomplish more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, is it, do I just sit there and be like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'm the greatest? No. Do I sit there and be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm really proud of what I've accomplished to this point? Like, when I turned 30, it was like, okay, what have I done? You know, self-reflection time. And I'm like, I'm proud of what I've done. Yeah. I can do more. You know what I'm saying? I, always. But. You know, I'm proud of, of what I've, where I came from and where I'm at, definitely. You know, and I know there's still, like, a lot more to go. Hell yeah, bro. The way you are, the way you talk about what you've done and what you're doing, and even going to show with the events that you're throwing and everything you're doing behind the scenes, like, there is a reason why you're getting blessed in everything you're doing, and it's because you're putting in the work. Yeah. Like, you can get blessed and not put any work, so and it's going to die out wherever it wherever it stops, but you're putting in the work, you're getting blessed and you're taking those blessings and just making them even bigger blessings. So with, with all that, like, is there, hold on, we got to pour up because it's the last one, bro. I Come you, on. I got you. What are we doing? What do you want? You want the Azul, Jack, Don Julio? Um, I'll take the Don Julio. Damn, there we go. Give me the other, the Azul. Shout out 805. Yeah, yeah, shout out Tito from the 805 for supplying me with this. He said, hey, your cousin likes tequila. I said, yeah, I do. Damn, there it is. Bomb. Not us alcoholics drinking at 12. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Breakfast of champions. It is. It's like going to a, to a brunch. <laughs> You're just Damn. like going to a brunch, bro. Oh, You're going to drink mimosas that early? Them brunches have been killing me. Me and Dylan went to a brunch two weeks ago, and we ended up at the Dodger game. And then at a day party, and then... Brunches are the best thing invented. I used it, to not fuck with brunches, but lately they just... I I've think been, that was the first brunch. It, it, it's, I've been going to Prohibition. That shit is lit. I've seen that. That shit, go. That shit is fucking lit. Count is in tomorrow. We're there. <laughs> oh, but yeah. is there a gem that, for anybody watching, watching you, that... You know, looking for answers, looking for some motivation, inspiration that you can tell them that you learned along the way or a quote that you resonate with. You know what I always think about when I'm tired? When Kim Kardashian said, get off your ass and fucking work. <laughs> I love that shit. I fucking <laughs> love that facts, shit. She spit facts, bro. <laughs> He yeah. spit facts. He, he got the accent and everything, bro. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that shit going viral. No, no, the accent. Yeah. <laughs> like, de definitely put in the work, but also, um, you know, don't, don't be a follower, be a leader. There you go. Yeah. I like that. It tells a life. Yeah. Vic, appreciate you. That's the podcast, baby. Let's go.